you got conked on the noggin by the Weezak Fairy. Sweet. It's about time. If you think like I do, you've been wondering what to do with aluminum cans that would be creative and fun. I don't drink enough canned beverages to really hit the recycling bins too hard. So, I give them to people who do. Or, now I do this. Quick disclaimer, do try this at home. However, please be careful. I can be one of the clumsiest people I know, and I somehow find ways to get injured just getting into my car. So, watch out for your fingers, eyes, and general fleshy areas when doing this, because I guarantee you'll want to use them later on in life. First of all, find a can. This is a beer can, but I chose this one specifically for a reason. You'll see why in a moment. Grab some good industrial strength scissors and cut off the top rim of your can. This is going to be repetitive, but I'm going to say it anyway. Be careful. This can is going to get cut a lot. You need to slice it all the way down to the edge of the ink at the bottom of the can. If the edge is too hard to make out, you can mark the circumference with a permanent pen. Now you're going to start making your weaving strips. Divide your can into quarters by cutting from the top to the bottom. Be careful, the upper lip is ragged, jagged, and I can't think of another word that rhymes right now, but just you wait. Oh, did I forget? You can use some regular paper scissors for this now. I have a pair that looks like it was made for a second grader, and they work great. While your can is in quarters, even off the scraggly lip. It doesn't have to be perfect. Most of the ends will be folded in by the time you're done. Maybe you can tell now that I chose this can because the inside is blue. Now have your quarters so that you have eight strips. Then have those eighths and mark where you meet the four quarters of the can with a V. You'll end up with 16 strips. Trust me, it gets better. Have those sixteenths into 30 seconds. Not like half a minute, but 32 strips. Now, pull down two strips where you marked each V. If you didn't mark it, simply begin by pulling down two strips, then count six strips, and pull down another two. Repeat two more times. Ignore these basement strips for the time being. We'll do the upstairs ones first. Beginning anywhere on the can, take a far right strip and bend it at a right angle so that the inkless side faces out. You can harden the fold with a pair of square pliers or just leave it this way for a smoother fold. Over under this strip against the ones to its left. Then bend it again at a right angle so that the ink faces back out and the strip points up. Either repeat this step with all the freestanding first strips on the can, or just do one side first. It's just easier to remember where you were if you do the same thing four times and then move on to the next step. Bend and weave the next two strips moving toward the left so you have three basket woven lines on the can. Then, take your top strip and bend it at a right angle so it doubles back in the opposite direction. This square edge marks the left and top end of the weave, so continue weaving and tucking the right side and the top until the end here also. If you need to cut some of the ends, feel free to do so. Bend all the edges back in on themselves at this right angle edge. Repeat to each face of the can. Not perfect, but who is? You'll have a slight curve to each swirl which will resemble a geometric flame of sorts, I, I suppose. Now, let's go back downstairs. Flip the can upside down and start bending your bottom strips at a right angle so they face right. The next bend will turn them back up. Don't bend them together. Each strip should be independent, one lying on top of the other. Here's one strip, all alone, and the other will look the same, just offset when they're together. Now, literally wind each of these around the other one so it looks as though they were folded together. Trust me, it's easier this way. Repeat with all sides of the can, then fold the ends of these arms together. Turn the can right side up and readjust the skinny arms so they sit equally to the thicker arms. Now that your can is open, reach in with your thumbs and press down on the bubble. This will make a table for the candle. And this is what it looks like. Of course, it does look a lot nicer with a votive candle inside. Oh, and even nicer with the lights dimmed. Altogether, it took about 45 minutes to make. Of course, I was watching TV the whole time, too. Mind you, this isn't my idea. Well, it is, but I'm not the first to think of it. But there's always room for new ways to green your scene. If you want a less square, fold minimal concept for your aluminum can, or even your plastic cup or water bottle or soda bottle, I've got something for you too.